Rook endings are the most common ending in all of chess. Mastering these endgames will allow you to win games that would otherwise be drawn in drawing games that would be lost. The most important rook ending to first learn is known as the Lucina position. With white to move, we have the basic Lucina position, which is a rook ending where one side has a king in front of its pawn, blocking the promotion square, and the defender only has a rook. How can white win this endgame? White needs to move the king off the promotion square, and then promote the pawn, right? It's easier said than done. If white plays rook e7 check, trying to push the black king away, black simply plays king f8, and white isn't making any progress. The only way to force the black king off the f-file and make room for the white king is by playing rook f1 check. If black plays king e6, white wins easily after king e8, followed by promoting the pawn. So black is forced to move to the g-file with king g7. Black's king has been forced away from the action, but white still needs to play carefully. Understanding white's next move is the key to the Lucina position. If white rushes to move the king out of the pawn's way with king e7, white will not have time to promote the pawn because the exposed king will always be attacked by the black rook. After rook e2 check, white's best move is to return the king in front of the pawn, correcting the mistake, and then using the Lucina strategy. If white plays king d6, rook d2 check, king e6, rook e2 check, after king d5, rook d2 check, white's king is forced to protect the d7 pawn, and white isn't making any progress. Since moving the king failed, what can white do? The key move in the Lucina position is playing the rook to the fourth rank, with rook f4. What is the idea behind this strange-looking rook move? Notice the rook is two ranks away from black's king, so black's king cannot attack it. The main idea is to shield the white king from the rook's checks. Grandmaster Aaron Nimzovich called this strategy, building a bridge. After rook c1, king e7, once the king leaves the protection of the passed pawn, black's rook immediately attacks it with rook e1 check. And after king d6, rook d1 check, white must not rush up the board and forget the protection of the d7 pawn. So white plays king e6. If black doesn't check the king and plays rook d2, white simply plays rook f5, followed by rook d5, shielding the pawn from the rook's attack and promoting the pawn on the next turn. After rook e1 check, king d5, in rook d1 check, we can now appreciate the strength behind white's rook f4 move. After rook d4, white's king is shielded from check, and the bridge has been built. White is ready to promote the pawn on the next turn. After rook f1 check, since king g7 lost to the powerful rook f4 move, what happens if black plays king g6 instead? With the idea of attacking the rook on f4 with king g5. Since the king no longer protects f8, white can win by playing rook f8. White is ready to move the king away from the promotion square when the rook on f8 will support the pawn. In order to prevent this, black needs to play king g7. Can you remember the key Lucina move that shields white's king from checks and builds a bridge for the pawn to promote? That's right, with rook f4. So that when white's king moves to d5, the rook can shield it from checks with rook d4. Do you have what it takes to win a rook and pawn ending using the Lucina strategy? Let's see.